Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to have a conversation with Dr. Douglas Shari. He's uh, going to discuss brain test. He's going to talk about how brain test works and what it is. We'll also talk about um, how ultrasound is being used to break up plaque in the brain, allowing for medications to work better. Welcome to the program, Dr. Douglas Shari. How are you? Fine. Thank you for the invite. Now, um, brain test, uh, what is your specialty and uh, what is brain test? So I'm a neurologist that specializes in the cognitive neurology at Ohio State. And um, brain test basically is a cognitive assessment tool. It's uh, a digital version of the SAGE test, which is uh, self-administered. So it's a, a pen and paper test, uh, SAGES, that uh, measures different parts of the brain orientation, memory, visual, spatial, language, executive abilities, um, gives a score and, and its main advantage to a lot of practitioners and uh, uh, lay people is that it's self-administered. You don't need an administrator. And uh, we decided to move to the digital world and uh, um, in combination and uh, with a uh, company called Brain Test, we digitalized and made in electronic form sage so you can take on a tablet um, or a um, enabled uh, computer um, the same cognitive assessment tool the purpose of this tool is to try to identify people very early on with cognitive disorders it doesn't diagnose any particular condition it's designed to try to um, identify people with a change over time, a, a change in their cognition that then the physician can investigate to say, hmm, there's something going on here. Let's figure out what it is. Could it be an early Alzheimer process? Could it be um, their sleep apnea? Maybe they're on a medication. Maybe um, their thyroid's too low, et cetera. Now, this is something that um, I can put on my phone, on my tablet, and test myself and um, a loved one as well? Uh, correct. So, um Brain test itself, the digital form, is on a tablet um, or something that you can use your finger um, or a stylus to draw because we're testing also constructional tests. So you couldn't use it on a phone. Okay, great. So you'd need a larger device uh, to do it. Um, and it, it's, we suggest that it be taken maybe every six months um, to uh, maybe you get a baseline, maybe at age 65 when you're still probably thinking pretty well or if if you're younger and you're having cognitive issues, then, you know, you could take it any time. Um, and then a uh, six month interval, it's something very easy to take. You can take the results into your doctor. Uh, they can keep track of it in their electronic medical record. You can take it at your doctor's office, um, wherever you'd like. Now you're the, the developer of the SAGE test for our listeners who may, may not be familiar with it or as familiar. What types of, uh, questions and, and answers. Is, is that the type of test that we're talking about? Yes. Yeah, so it's exactly the same on both. The SAGE is a written test. It's um, free of charge, just downloaded from the internet. You'd have to print it out. Um, but you, it has things like what is the date? Uh, they have pictures you have to name. So it's a um, language test. There's um, questions called similarities. So you describe how um, for example, a, a watch and a ruler are similar. Um, there's a couple of math questions, um, copying a three-dimensional figure, seeing about your visual spatial constructional abilities, uh, clock draw tests is in it. These are fairly traditional tests that um, you know physicians and providers know quite well. Uh, there's a verbal fluency task, uh, for example, you know, write down 12 different countries uh, type of thing. A trails, a B task, so you go from uh, number letter, um, so it's a modified task that way, a problem-solving task, a memory task. So it measures, and it was designed to very carefully, and it's a validated test. Uh, we have public, published on it uh, fairly extensively. Both the brain test is validated, plus the SAGE test uh, before that was validated, and it, it's, uh, it tries to measure the different parts of the brain. It's not just focused on just memory, for example, or just language. It's, it's a global um, uh, easy to use test, maybe takes 13 to 15 minutes to complete and uh, easy to score. And as I said, its main claim to fame is that it's uh, self-administered so that 
you can eliminate the administrator time, effort, and um, expertise. The SAGE test and, and brain test, they only measure cognitive function or the diminishing thereof. Uh, so at the beginning of the test, we asked for education and aid, and they are normed. So we had a large study uh, of normative values, and the SAGE test and brain test are both a age and educated normed. Um, and so you can add those um, uh, brain test automatically scores the test for the individual, so you don't have to uh, score it, and it automatically takes into account your age and education. Um, at least that's what whatever you put down, <laughs> um, and it will um, adjust the uh, neuropsychological test score based on age and education normative data. And um, what about availability? Is this something that is uh, available nationwide, regional, uh, worldwide? What about availability being uh is it free of charge as well, just like the SAGE test? Uh, so SAGE test free of charge. It's available everywhere. It's over 2.3 million downloads worldwide. It's in several languages. Uh, it's getting very popular and uh, more and more popular in Europe and, of course, across uh, North America. Uh, brain test is uh, a fee. So that is not uh, – that is um, – in a subscription right currently right now, there may be other ways that it can or will be um, um, available. But currently right now, it's in a uh, the brain test as a subscription model so that um, you can buy one test and just do it one time or you can do it um, every six months, which is what we suggest, sort of look at change over time. Uh, and they uh, score it automatically and then you can print it out. It has all your answers, exactly what you drew. You can take that into the uh, physician. There's uh, providers that um, reply back with your score to let you know uh, what it is and what it means. Now, is there a, 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 a company, a companion app or some type of platform for physicians specifically for brain tests? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, uh there's an area for physicians to find out about it. Um, also, all the data, uh, since brain test uses the exact same questions as SAGE, under SAGE test, there's also a physician area that describes all the data, the normative data, the research studies, uh, links to the published articles, um, what a test, what a score means, uh, what the uh, ROC analysis, specificity and sensitivity of the test um, you know, for their age and education, et cetera. So all that is available to physicians on the web. Now, is this available through um, OSU or through uh, your company, a different company? Where can our listeners go online, get more information, and get a download for, for brain test? So for brain test, you would uh, just need to um, go to braintest.com, um, www.braintest.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you can that you can get there via a uh, mobile app uh, that's through Android or iOS or Amazon. Um, it's also um, on certain computers if you can use a stylus, etc. So, or you can go right to the uh, website to find out more information. Now, um, very briefly, I know it, it's not a lot of time, but when we're talking, uh, I mentioned earlier we were talking about ultrasound being used to break up plaque in the brain, allowing for some of these medications to work better when someone is diagnosed with some uh, maybe some mild cognitive impairment if medication is needed. Yes, yeah, so um, we're looking at, uh, of course, for things like Alzheimer's disease, um, and this is mostly focused on trying to help prevent or slow down that condition. We're um, not doing really great with disease modifying agents. And so we're looking at also other devices and an interesting one that is just starting right now at uh, Ohio State and a few other centers across the country is looking at uh, a low intensity focused ultrasound. This is outside the brain. You have sound waves that can focus into a particular area, say an area where the plaques are heavy for Alzheimer's, maybe in the temporal lobe. And um, it's designed to open up the brain blood brain barrier on a temporary basis and it could be done in a very small spot or a larger spot you can just set your uh, parameters and we're hoping that and so right now we're doing safety tests on it mm -hmm. making sure it works like we think it does and we're hoping that the the plaque that's stuck in the brain and can't get out through the blood brain barrier um, and the medications that are from the outside trying to get into the brain uh, through the blood brain barrier if we open it up in areas that are critical for clearing out plaque for example we're hoping that 
um, in the next phase of testing that medications might be able to get in, get rid of the stuff more easily and be more efficacious in terms of um, improving uh, or slowing down the decline of Alzheimer's. And will we be able to get some more information about uh, the study and the progress of this uh, technique at uh, the website at OSU? Uh, sure. So there'll be a, a information links there and also um, people that are interested in clinicaltrials.gov uh, can find the um, can find the study online. Um, probably put in um, uh, ultrasound. There's some search criteria that people can use uh, for the uh, uh, basically, maybe you would put in, I think, blood-brain barrier, probably the best term to put in, and maybe Alzheimer's disease or cognition, and it should come right up with the um, uh, all the details of the study and how to contact us uh, if, if people are interested. Okay. Dr. Sherry, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning. My pleasure. Thank you very much. You've been listening Bye. to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.